Dropper and Adam. Today we are discussing about topic design of reinforced concrete. Concrete structures. Now it is renamed as structural engineering one. Okay, so what are the prerequisites for this subject are? First, uh, first we will uh, go to engineering mechanics. Engineering mechanics. So engineering mechanics, we will know how to deal with the, uh, how to resolve the uh, free body into the forces like F sin theta and F cos theta. So we know how to resolve the body into the forces. Next. So coming to the next sub, uh, semester, we will uh, deal with the subject strength of materials. Strength of materials. So in strength of materials, we will get to know these uh, uh, topics like uh, different types of beams. So different types of beams, there will be cantilever beam. Cantilever beam, simply supported beam. And fixed beams. And overhanging beams. So these are the topics we will cover in strength of materials. And in strength of materials, we will know how to determine the uh, beams. Like we have to know how to do analysis of the beams. Analysis. Analysis for we will do will be in strength of materials. Like to find out bending moment and shear force. So after coming to the next semester, we will go to a new subject like structural analysis 1 and SA2. In these uh, subjects, we will know how to deal with uh, to determine the bending moment and shear force for the different types of beams and frames in different methods like Canis method and movement area method. So these are the different methods in SA1 and SA2. We will cover the, to how to find out the bending moment and shear force. Now coming to the design of reinforced concrete structures. So what is meant by design? So design. So first we have definition of design. So to know the definition. First, we have to know the analysis part. Analysis is to determine the bending moment and shear force of a uh, structural element. So, after getting the analysis, we have to find out the design. So, design is to determine the cross section dimensions of the analytic structure. Like to find out the cross sectional dimensions. Like if you have to take any beam, we have to know this width of the beam and depth of the beam. So, to find out the width of the beam and depth of the beam, and what are the amount of reinforcement we are placing. So we have to know this, all the parameters like width of the beam, depth of the beam and cross-sectional area of the beam and detailing of the beam, like reinforcement. Okay. So this is design. Next is reinforcement. So what is meant by reinforcement? So in reinforcement, there will be different types of different types of steel we will be using. So why we use reinforcement means to give additional strength to the structural element. Suppose if we give, if there is a PCC, PCC is nothing but plain cement concrete. In plain cement concrete, there will be only cement, fine aggregate, coarse aggregate, and sand. There will be no structural, uh, any type of steel. So that is known as PCC. If you apply heavy load on this PCC, it tends to fail. So to counteract that failure, we are introducing a reinforcement in cement concrete that is known as RCC. So in RCC there is different types of steel will be used. So first we are using in ordinary nine steel. Nine steel are using now we are using HYSD bars. HYSD bars is nothing but high yield strength deformation bars and now for heavy structures or bridges like them like that things we are using TMT bars. TMT bars is nothing but thermomechanically treated bars. So this is about reinforcement. And we are coming about next part is concrete. So 
कॉन्क्रीट विच है कॉन्क्रीट इट्स अ मिक्सचर ऑफ इट इज अक्सचर ऑफ सीमेंट फाइना क्रिकेट एंड कोर्स एंड क्रिकेट एंड वाटर सो आफ्टर मिक्सिंग ऑल दीज थिंग्स इट इज द पेस्ट विल बी फॉर्म दैट इज नोन एज कॉन्क्रीट एंड आफ्टर पैसिंग फॉर ट्वेंटी एट डेज आफ्टर क्यूरिंग फॉर ट्वेंटी एट क्यूरिंग फॉर वन डे इट विल बी बिकम हार्ड एंड स्ट्रक्चर हार्ड एंड कॉन्क्रीट दैट इज नोन एज कॉन्क्रीट नेक्स्ट इज स्ट्रक्चर सो स्ट्रक्चर सो वॉट इज मैं structure is nothing but assembly of different structural elements so structural elements such as an rcc structure is beams columns footing slabs staircase the assembly of different structural elements where the load can transfer from one member to another member that is known as structure okay so so structure the load always the load transfer will be from load transfer will be from always from bottom to from top to bottom so if you apply load of this slab it will first the load will go into the slab from slab to beams beams to columns and columns to footing and from footing it will go to the ground level okay so this will be the load mechanism and this is known as structure so in rcc drs we will be dealing different topics that is known as beams columns slabs footings and stairs so these are the different structural elements we are we will be dealing with the rcc so if we go to the beams there will be two types of beams that is uh, single reinforced beams and double reinforced beams and if we go to columns there will be long column and short column if you go to the slab there will be two types of uh, three types of slabs will be there one way slab two way slab and another one is flat slabs and if you go to footings there will be different types of footings footing will be mainly mainly depend within the substructure it depends on type of the foundation shallow foundation and deep foundation in shallow foundation we will get in different types of beams like isolated square footing isolated rectangular footing isolated circular footing trapezoidal footing Combined footing and uh, different and uh, combined footing. These are the different types of footings. And the uh, last one is raft foundation. So raft foundation also one of the type of footing. Raft footing. So this will be used for uh, like uh, commercial buildings, like the, where the area of the building is more. It will be in this type of. Footing and it will be used for high high rise buildings also, skyscrapers. Okay, these are the structural elements. And the last one is staircase. Staircase. So staircase, different types of staircase. Double level staircase, single level single staircase, double flight staircase, circular staircase. These are the different types of staircase used for the residential buildings. So so in design of many first concrete structures, we will be dealing with all these. structural elements these are the structural elements they have to arrange in a proper way that load can transfer from one number to another number so it will be it will not cause any failures for the building so next one so to design all these structural elements there are different types of uh, methods are there to design there are first one working stress method second ultimate load method third one ls limit state method these are the three different methods used to design any structural so working stress method this is the oldest method where the older days they are used this method and ultimate load method is used for only 10 years there is a failure in this method so they did not the So this is much for design. Okay, next one. Now we are using the limit state method. Limit state method from 1960s, 1960s to till now we are using this limit state method. Okay. And there is a code book for this design. So that is known as IS 456 year 2000. 2000 is the year. And name of the code book is name of 
as 4 by 6 2 tons 6 is the revised year okay so from this code book we have to follow the guidelines of what they are given in indian standards according to according to that only we have to design the structure such as beams columns footings staircase and slabs okay so now we will deal with the design methods design design so design methods will be the three types working stress method ultimate load method and limit stress method in working stress method in working stress method so in working stress method usually the cross section dimension of the structure will be the high so usage of material will be very low okay why because if we construct any building, it should do serviceability for 50 years or 100 years. Usually, the design period will be 100 years. So, if we construct any building or any structure, like commercial buildings or residential buildings, it should service us for 100 years. Now. So, so in older days, what they are used? They are, they are used working stress method. In this working stress method, they have used some factor of safety. Factor of safety. So factor of safety, usually in, in PRCs there will be two materials will be used. One is reinforcement, another one is concrete. That is nothing but concrete and steel. Okay. Concrete and steel. So in, uh, in working stress method, the factor of safety for concrete is 1.8. Okay. For uh, steel is okay. Okay. Usually, this is one point. This is three. This is one point. Okay. So if you take any grade of concrete, usually grade of concrete will be from M five, M seven point five, M ten, M twenty, twenty five, thirty. Will be suppose if you take M thirty grade concrete. What is meant by M thirty? M is the mix. And 30 is the characteristic strength of the grade of the concrete. Okay, so it can resist 30 newton per mm square. So if you take 30 newton per mm square, so what is the factor of safety per concrete? 3. So we have to divide it by 3. So it will take only 10. So so the strength of the concrete will be 10 per in working stress method. So if you take the factor of safety more, the cross section dimensions will become more. Okay. One is the, this is the one of the difference in working stress method. And other difference is, this is the stress strength curve for the concrete. Okay, my scale. This is the stress and this is the strength. Okay. So if it is, if you take this stress strength curve, for working stress method, we will be using only up to the elastic limit. Okay, up to the plastic limit. So up to plastic limit only it will be constant. Beyond the plastic limit, it will come on the limit scale. If heavy loads are used in the mine steel, they will be difficult to do in working stress method. So it is only used, it will be easy to do in limit stress method. This is the one of the difference. And there will be a, another difference is in working stress method, the cross section dimensions of the structural element is more, so that the estimation, so the quantities also will be more. So it is not economical for working stress method. Okay, coming to next method, ultimate load method. In ultimate load method, there, is, there are two criteria in working stress method, ultimate load method and LS. One is safety, another one is service of So safety, so safety failure. So usually failure will be done in three types for uh, structural elements. One is pending failure, shear failure, third one is deflection failure or personal failure. These are the failures done in safety. In serviceability, the failures will be vibration, uh, vibration, cracking. So this will be the failures. So in working stress method, the safety criteria is very much satisfied, but serviceability criteria is not satisfied. Okay. So when in the ultimate road method, Serviceability criteria is satisfied, safety criteria is not satisfied. So, after uh, revision of uh, code book, 
Lord finally decided to do this aggressor method. In aggressor method, these two criteria is satisfied. So now we are completing these two methods. So this is for the today's class.